Hey folks, day five. You've made it through day five. That's a pretty exciting milestone. Um, I hope that you are ready for the upcoming two days that you have that will be, uh, well, technically they're unscheduled, although I obviously have some suggestions for how you should spend that time. But as uh, my final thought for today, I really wanted to uh, take a moment to talk about part of the assignment that you have. So I'm scrolling down here. Um, I've asked you to draft the first half of your implementation strategy, which you may have already done by the time you're watching this, which is cool. I'm, I'm, I think that's great. Um, what I wanted to talk about, though, a little bit was this phase one strategy goals. Um, and I want to talk about it in some terms that might be familiar to you. Uh, I want to talk a little bit more about SMART objectives or SMART goals. Um, and I want to talk about tying that to the need. So I think that's important to recognize as you're moving forward that your, your goals or your objectives be tied back to that need statement because you want to make sure everything is smooth. Remember uh, one of the readings talks about telling a story uh, and then sort of matching that narrative with numbers. Well this this is where you do that. This is where the, the rubber hits the road, so to speak. So uh, let's take a moment and let's talk about how your needs statement should be crafted at this point and how that's connecting to SMART uh, goals and objectives. So uh, here's how we're going to do this. Uh, first of all, I think you should summarize your needs statement. You, you created that pretty much on the, first, on the first day you had a written assignment. I think that was day two. Um, and now I'd like for you to summarize it before you go into stating your goals or, or working on those goals. So think about this. If you, if you had to answer this right now, what would you say the problem is? Uh, that's, that's a way of stating what the need is and where the need is for your innovative idea. Next, I'd like for you to take just in one sentence to explain, either you can do this on paper, you can do this out loud, uh, but do articulate this before you move ahead. This is a problem because, give us some reason why this needs to be addressed, why your innovation is necessary. Add to that by talking about if your problem isn't resolved, then what? Um, something drastic is going to happen? Uh, if not, maybe it's not really a need. Uh, maybe it's just a, a want. Uh, but I think, you want, I think you want to make it a need. So try to think about what would happen if the problem isn't resolved or if this need isn't met. Uh, this gives real impetus for why your innovation is so important. Next, if you could talk about some of the challenges to resolving this problem. In other words, these are some of the obstacles that your innovative idea has to either confront or overcome or both in order to achieve whatever goals that you're going to set for yourself in a minute. It's always important to recognize what is already out there. So we've talked about this in previous days, but I don't think any of you are addressing something that hasn't already been addressed somehow by somebody. So it's very important to understand what has already been done so that you can talk about how you're breaking that cycle, how you're disrupting uh, the, the expected cycle of things or, or flow of things. Um, so recognize that there are already some solutions to this problem, but they aren't adequate because why? What are they missing that your innovation provides? So this is where you get a chance uh, to actually talk about your innovative idea. Think about why your innovation needs to be used to solve this problem and how would you explain that? If you had to convince somebody or if you were pitching this idea to someone, what would you say? Remember, this is just a statement. We're not looking for you know, an essay or a dissertation or a book. Uh, we're looking for, quite frankly, a long sentence. Now, we'll know that this problem is resolved when what happens? What, what is the observable outcome that shows us that the problem has been addressed and solved by your innovation? 
This is key. If, uh, quite frankly, of all these statements I'm asking you to think about as you summarize your need statement, this is the one that's going to help you link your narrative to numbers or link your narrative to evidence. So now that you have that in mind, probably skipped a little quickly, now that you have this in mind, now let's think about your objectives. Let's think about your goals that you're writing, all right? And let's think about some of the characteristics that they need to have. So I'm going to be speaking a little broadly here, and it's hard for me to speak more specifically because so many of you in this course have such different innovations that you're, you're developing. So I can't really dive into one in particular or one kind in particular without isolating some of the others. So I'm going to speak a little broadly. But as I'm speaking about this, I want you to be making connections to what you're actually working on. I want you to be thinking of your idea, your innovative plan or project or whatever it is, and how these general statements I'm making can apply to what you're doing. All right. So it's up to you to make that connection. I know that puts a lot of the onus or a lot of the responsibility on you, but um, hey, it's life. All right. So what do goals and objectives do? Well, quite frankly, they are exactly what it says here. Broad, general, intangible, and abstract statements of what you wish to accomplish. Right. So these are the big ideas. It provides a description of what your organization hopes to accomplish. And it helps you identify the results or outcomes that you plan to accomplish. So these are big statements about what you're hoping to accomplish and what are the kinds of outcomes or results that you're planning are a part of that. Remember that your goals must link back to your needs statement. It's absolutely imperative that the two come together. If not, you've lost the story, right? You've lost your narrative. And so those of us who are reading your strategic plan will not get what you're doing. It won't make sense because you will have a break between what you said the need was and what you're saying the, the, the goals or objectives are. They have to be together. They have to be linked. I'd like you to try to use visionary words in your goals. So use words like decrease, deliver, develop, establish, improve, increase, produce, provide. You can probably think of a few others. These are things that help you think about what the future brings. What are you, what are you accomplishing? So I'm going to give you an example. This is from uh, actually a, a program that I operated a couple of years ago in uh, a particular community in the Western Cape of South Africa. One of our goals was to help decrease the degree of malnutrition among young children in disadvantaged communities of the Cape Winelands District of the Western Cape, South Africa. Now, a couple things to recognize about this goal statement. Uh, one is it is definitely visionary, right? And, and I have the word decrease in there. Uh, that's the visionary word that I'm using. I know it's kind of hard to think of that as a visionary word, but trust me, it was a vision. Um, but I'm, I'm looking at, again, being a little vague, I'm saying decrease the degree of malnutrition. So I haven't specified exactly how much it should decrease. But I am also saying a couple of other things. I'm targeting what the problem is, that's malnutrition, who the target uh, population is, that's young children, where they're located in disadvantaged communities of the Cape Winelands District of the Western Cape in South Africa. That is super specific. Um, I think that you should try to be specific about that as well. I know that these goal statements are, are, are big. We just said that broad, general, intangible, and abstract statements. However, you do want to be able to identify who your target population is. And you do want to be able to identify where this is taking place. Okay. Now remember, objectives represent steps toward accomplishing goals. And for your written assignment for our entrepreneurship class, I've really asked you to uh, work on goals. But I think when you're working on these phase one goals, you also need to think about how they can, they can be transformed into objectives. Because objectives represent steps toward accomplishing those goals. So if you could include the objectives along with your goals in your phase one goals section, I think that would be outstanding. Now, objectives are a little different because instead of being abstract, intangible, blah, 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 they are instead uh, narrow, precise, 
tangible, concrete, and can be measured. So here we're taking these big goal statements and now we're, we're streaming them, we're funneling them. So you might have one overarching goal, decrease malnutrition among you know, youth in a particular community. But now we're going to talk about how that's going to be accomplished. And what I'm asking you to do is use the SMART method for developing objectives that go along with your, in this case it's not a grant proposal, but with your uh, entrepreneurship idea or your innovative idea goals. So SMART objectives, you've seen these before. Uh, it's kind of cut off here at the bottom, so let me just adjust this a little bit. There we go. SMART stands for specific, measurable, achievable, realistic, and timely. Now, if you haven't seen this before, welcome to SMART objectives. If you have seen this before, then you know what we're talking about, and hopefully this is familiar enough to you that you've already started to incorporate this. Remember, specific, you want to make sure that it's very clear what you are targeting. Your objective needs to be precise and well-defined. Everybody should be able to understand it. Someone with no expertise, no experience, no scaffold to connect your idea to anything should be able to read your objectives and understand them. Next, it needs to be measurable, right? So how will we know when you have completed it? And what evidence will we need to see to confirm that you have accomplished that objective for your goal? Have you stated how you will judge whether it's been completed or not? Super important that you do that. So you've made it understandable and clear. That's the specific part. And now you've made it clear what the evidence will be to show that it has been accomplished, to show that you have done it. Next, it needs to be achievable. So you've talked already a little bit about your organization, and uh, you're going to talk a little bit more about the infrastructure and the capacity of it as you move forward. So when we're thinking about that, and by we, uh, it's the collective we, it's the royal we, when anyone who's reading your strategic plan is thinking about what you're doing, they're going to want to be able to see that you can actually do what you say you're going to do. So we're asking, is it within your capabilities? Are there sufficient resources available to enable this to happen? And can it be done at all? In other words, are you setting goals that can actually be achieved? That's, that's really important. Uh, and it, it connects very closely to this realistic part. And so it has to be realistic in order to be achievable. In other words, is it possible, not just for the individual, but for your organization to perform the objective? And how sensible is the objective in the current context? We're not businesses, right? But we often use these kinds of things in the business world, we. Um, and does it fit into the overall pattern of your organization's work? So this is going to help us understand whether or not it's realistic for you to accomplish this and whether if it's realistic, it's actually achievable. Next, I'd like to point out that the, the last part, the T on SMART, is timely. Is there a deadline? And is it feasible to meet this deadline? Is it appropriate to do this work now? And are there review dates? So you want to set some sort of target either milestone or deadline or uh, you know a cycle uh, that's systematic and shows that there are targets for you know every month or every week or every year or however long so since you're doing this for phase one we know that there's a there's a goal at the end of phase one that you're trying to accomplish but is there other stuff along the way and can you talk about that in in terms that are that are identifiable that are that are timed So state your objectives in quantifiable terms, if at all possible. This is narrative connecting to numbers. State your objectives in terms of outcomes, not process. The things that we see actually finished at the end, those are the outcomes. Objectives, that, so therefore, should specify the result of an activity. They should identify the target audience or community being served. And they need to be realistic and capable of, capable of being accomplished within the grant period. I'm going to stop here and I'm going to come back in the second part of my final thoughts section, a lot of thoughts, uh, to give you an example of what I'm talking about.